Hey everyone, we're going to continue talking about invertibility in this video. So in the last video, we talked about most of the important concepts and what invertibility means when we were talking about how a MA1 process is really equivalent to an AR infinity process under a certain circumstance. So the second video is just for completeness, going in the reverse direction, but make sure you watch the first video for most of the important concepts. So as we said, the reverse direction is that an AR1 process is also the same thing as an MA infinity process. So we just flip the orders in the MA and AR. And I'm going to prove that to you using this mathematical formulation. And then I'm going to give you the same thing, the causal or function tree, in order to understand it more intuitively. So first, let's look at the mathematical formulation. Here's an AR1 process. We have some time series is a function of its lagged version from one period ago. So there's a coefficient phi, which is going to be important later on plus some error or uh, innovation from the current time period, which is unobserved, of course. Now we're going to, as we did in the previous video, we're going to be doing some operations on equations. So let's first move this phi, c t, uh, t minus 1, to the other side, so subtract it. And we're going to factor out this 1 minus phi lag. So this is using the lag operator. Again, you can think of an exponent 1 here, if you would like, multiplied by c sub t is equal to epsilon sub now, if I divide both sides by 1 minus phi L, I get 1, minus, 1 over 1 minus phi L epsilon sub t is equal to C sub t. Now, just like we did in the previous video, we can expand this guy, saying that it's a infinite geometric series with common ratio phi L, and write that out in its complete form, which is 1 plus phi L plus phi squared L squared all to infinity multiplied by epsilon sub t, of course, and still equals c sub t. All right, so now we can basically just take this whole thing and apply each term in the sum to this epsilon sub t. When we do that, we get phi times epsilon sub t minus 1. That's the uh, product of this phi l and this epsilon sub t. Phi squared l squared times epsilon sub t gives us the second term and so on. And I've taken the first term, which is just epsilon sub t, and put it at the very end. And all this is, of course, equal to c sub t. Now, if we look at this, what did we just do? We took an AR1 process and we recast it as a MA infinity process, right? Because this is saying that my time series is a function of these random innovations or errors, infinite periods in the past. So going from period t minus 1, period t minus 2, period t minus 3, all the way to infinity. And so that's why this guy is a MA infinity process. So we just showed that an AR1 process is equivalent to an MA infinity process, again, under a certain circumstance. Under the circumstance where, where are my colors? Under the circumstance where we have this phi has to be less than one in absolute value. And that has to be true, remember, because that's what allows us to take this um, formulation right here and expand it as its infinite geometric series. We need that phi in absolute values less than 1 for this thing to converge to this infinite sum in the first place. So let's look at the causal or function tree to further prove to ourselves or understand why this might be true. So we have with the AR1 process that the c sub t is a function of epsilon sub t, which is here, and c sub t minus 1, which is here. So that's what these arrows are for. Now if I were to write t minus 1s everywhere here, so that becomes t minus 2, t minus 1. So we see that c sub t minus 1 is a function of c sub t minus 2 and epsilon sub t minus 1. So that's what's happening right here. Just continue that chain infinitely um, in the past. So we see that just as we can say that c sub t is a function of c sub t minus 1 and epsilon sub t, we can also say that it's a function of still epsilon sub t and then epsilon sub t minus 1, epsilon sub t minus 2, epsilon sub t minus 3, and all these epsilons going forever into the past. So that's why we can show that an AR1 is equivalent to this MA infinity process if we have that the phi in absolute value is less than 1. And if that does hold, then we say that this AR1 process is invertible, just as we said the MA1 process was invertible in the previous video. All right, so I hope this helps to solidify the idea of invertibility a little bit more for you guys and round out the whole process and show this really cool link between the AR and MA processes. They're not two separate entities, but rather two sides of the same coin. So until next time.